Welcome to How To Pam. Let's talk Linux, the channel that promotes professional computing with free open source software, and we're helping FOSS users find the end. This tutorial is going to be about how to design a layout for a trifold brochure and how to build the trifold brochure template and how to build a trifold brochure with the margin style or the bleed style and how to use some concepts to put artwork and color on your trifold brochure. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do when we're talking about making a brochure is decide what kind of brochure we'd like to have. Now you can go on the internet here and you can see a number of terrific brochure styles and you'll have to choose the style that you might like to set up your trifold brochure on. Now you will notice that there are two styles of trifold brochure. One has a margin like this one here. You can see the white margin all around the outer edge this one here as well or there is a brochure we create a template a little bit larger so that you can put your images right out to the edge rather than leaving a margin however your critical images and your critical text still need to stay inside the safe printable area so to set up our trifold brochure I have chosen a paper here now uh, when you do that you can go to new and choose maybe inches if you'd like or millimeters inches and make it 11 and a half by 9 that is larger than a letter size paper but I'll show you why now I'm not going to create this because I already have it but you set this at 11 and a half by 9 and then go ahead and press OK to that then you'll have this white background now you can see here I have some dimensions here 11 and a half inches or the millimeters and 9 inches to the outer edges of this this canvas here now the reason that we are larger than a standard size paper is because we want to bring our images and color out past this printable edge to make a bleed type brochure and this here is the margin in here that we will have to be careful putting critical imagery and text out there because it's not a safe area though it will print it is not safe but in order to get our brochure printed with no margin around the edge we need to put color and stuff right out past this here edge so you can see here that the brochure bleed style a4 template size is 11 half by 9 inches and it prints on eight and a half by 11 inch letter size paper now you will see with the dimensions here we have three columns and these three columns you'll notice this one here is three inches and 11 16 three inches and 11 16 three inches and 5 8 this last column is a little bit smaller a sixteenth of an inch smaller only because when you fold the paper that little bit smaller works out and you don't notice it at all now we do need to bring our guides in here and we have to have guides that set these marks so if we go ahead and we look up here with these little niches you'll see there's about 10 10 little niches between each of the one two three increments so we do need to the edge of our paper here is set at zero and we need to be in six millimeters or one quarter inch from the edge so we grab a guide here and bring it in and there's your zero mark and if you look at these little niches there's one two and a half two and a half that's about a quarter inch there and drop that guide there put it right on that if you look at the arrow up here there's the zero there's one two and a half and you can put it right there then go ahead and grab another one and move it over two and a half from there one two and a half from there and drop it there then you can grab another one and go over here to you've got the three and then the little niches is four five there's one two three four five six and drop it there now if you pause this video you can see the number of little nicks I have here and you can set your guides 
on these niches, on these lines up top here. So go ahead and set up all your guides, being careful to be as accurate as possible. And you can see that, you see right on the end here, we can see up top here, which notch it's on, and then just come in one, two and a half, okay? And drop that. So go ahead and put all your guides in there and then bring some guides down from the top. Again, look on the side over here. There's the zero Then go one, two and a half and drop that guide on there and grab another one and one, one, two. That's two and a half, two and a half. Grab another guide, come way right down to the bottom here. Looking over here, you can start at the bottom of your paper if you want, find the edge of your paper and then go up one, two and a half, little nick. And bring the final one down. Okay, so go ahead and put all your guides in there, following the little niches here on both sides of your viewport. And then once you've done that, you can see from this template here that I'm not going to have you put colors and stuff in on your template. That's strictly for your view. An accurate way to set up these guides can be to take your paper here, which is 11 and a half by nine and grab a rectangle tool and at the outer extremity, draw a rectangle. Now make certain over here that you're on inches and that it is actually the correct size. See, we have 11.52 by nine. We wanna make sure that we're on the right size here. There is nine and there is five, seven. If we want, we can click in there, remove that seven, and then just click off on this page. Now we have this area selected here. Go ahead and check view and make sure that your snap to guides is turned off. Okay, snap to guides is handy when you're drawing, but to set the guides, it'll be best to have them turned off. So go ahead with your move tool, take the guide and set it right on the outer extremity. And again, another one on the outer extremity. And we can bring one down from the top and another one here. Now, let's go to select and you'll see there's a shrink tab here. Click on that and tell this selected area to shrink by one quarter inch, which would be actually quarter inch all the way around the perimeter of our paper. Say okay to that. Now that will shrink by the quarter inch necessary for our margin here, for our bleed area. See that? Now we can go get our move tool again and we can go ahead and move those guides in there on the lines of that rectangle. Just like that. This will help you set those lines. We can go ahead and deselect, select none. And now we need to set this into three compartments, do we not? And we had compartments of three and five eighths, three and five eighths, and three and 11 sixteenths. So let's get the rectangle tool again, and let's click right on our guide. Let's make certain that we get on our guide here, and let's pull this over to this one and you see here at the bottom if we look at the gauge there we have our 11 inches so let's pull this out to three and five eighths which is three and six two five would be the decimal okay if you have trouble getting it in there just click in here and write two five and then we grab another guide well it's still highlighted and bring it over to that area then we grab it and go on to seven and a quarter three and five eighths and three and five eighths is seven and a quarter and we grab another guide and pull that over there and then there's the last section if you want to set the other lines for your margin you need to be back this way an eighth of an inch so instead of three and five eighths it would be three and a half and you can use this rectangle to do your measurements and grab another guide and put it on there. Now three and a half and the other side would be three and five eighths would be three and three quarters would be three seven five and we could grab another guide this was seven and a quarter so this is going to be seven and one two five and you could bring that over there. This should be three seven five and you could bring that over there. Now you can see how we were able to use the rectangle to actually lay out our guides. And now that you're finished, go ahead to view and go back and turn snap on guides back on because it will be a handy thing when you're drawing.
to be able to snap to those guides. So that's just a little tip on how to help yourself out when you're laying out the guides, if it works for you. If you'd sooner just drag them over by the ruler here, then that's fine as well. After you have your guide in, you can see that we've made a margin around our paper of a quarter inch all the way around, which is called the bleed area. And we are not going to have that area printed because our paper is only the size of the white portion. But we will drag images and stuff onto that red area. However, it will be cut off there. So it's called the bleed area or the cut area. We also have this caution areas. Now this area is caution area or this margin is a caution area because certain printers may not guarantee accurate printing right out to the edge of the red. So if you have critical text or critical images crossing into this margin, it may not on some printers get printed accurately. So we have this yellow caution area. So the area here is the fold area and you don't want to put text on the fold if you can help it or a person's face in an image because when you fold it and then you open it, that portion of the image does not look very presentable. So we try to keep the critical text or the critical portion sections of images off of the fold or the crease area. So that area is also a caution area. The green area is always safe for to put your, your images and your text on. So you got critical text and images. If you're in this green area, you will be okay. Now it will take you some time to get your, your grid lines laid out here, but take the time to cautiously set them so that they're fairly accurate. And then you will be working in the green area primarily and, and moving images and text close to the yellow area, but being cautious that what is ever on the yellow area may or may not be safe. Now you can see here, the red is the bleed zone or the cut zone, the yellow is the caution zone, and the green is your safe zone. You can see here are your dimensions. And for your own notes, when you're setting out these areas, these grid lines, try to be fairly close on your letter size paper to these dimensions. A little bit one way or the other is not going to hurt. If you're going to be an artist, digital or graphic design artist, you want to try to keep your lines within a pixel. Okay, and here is some notes. So that is our layout. And now I will go ahead and get rid of everything but the background. And we will start to bring in some artwork onto our brochure. Okay, so you've got all your guides in there now. It took you a little while, but you got them there and it's important that the layout is done properly. If you have a good layout, then the finished product will look good. So maybe what we want to do is first take this background and change it a little bit off white here. Let's add a layer. Make sure you're on the background layer here. Let's add a layer. Just go to a new layer. Make sure it says transparency here. Say okay to that. Now we have a new layer on top there. Let's find a shade of gray here. Maybe we should try a gold color here and go with gray because we're going to use gold. So you want to use the grays that are going to blend with your gold. So if we're using this gold, then we need to go with the gray off of the side of the gold here. We wouldn't want to use the gray off of the green. If we say went here, we're going to use gold, but this gray is coming out of green. It's got green highlights in it. If we're going to use gold, then we need to use the grays that are associated with the gold. Maybe something fairly light, but not white. So now we take the paint bucket and we can just put a little there, a little different color there. Okay, now I have some images here. If we just go, let's get the move tool. Let's go and open up my images here on the desktop. I have some pictures here. That'll be fine. Let's open that one up. It wants to convert it. That's fine. Okay, there it is there. Now, you'll notice it looks pretty big, but it's only because it's showing at 100% and our brochure is only showing at 25%. So let's right click on this and from edit, choose copy visible. Let's go back to our brochure and let's right click and let's go to edit and it says paste into selection right there. Now we've got the move tool here. So let's go ahead and move this over here. Now remember 
as I said, you want to stay out of the margins with critical objects. And you can see that here we've gone over the margin. But this house here, it will not hurt. Now, we do not want to cut the peaks of the house off. So we're going to have to keep the peak of the house inside the margins. And here we would have the crease right on the edge of that. It would be better if we moved it over here. And then just click off of that image and that's there. Now let's go ahead and bring another image in. You may have some of your own images. Here's one here. Let's open that. Again, it wants to convert it. Okay, again, it looks large, but these images are all the same size. Go to edit, copy visible, and in the viewport it looks large, but when we go to a larger viewport that's only showing at 25%, it shows quite small. Let's go to edit, and let's right click, go to edit, and then go to paste into selection. Then we can move this image over here. Now you noticed we'll leave that image right there. And let's just click off of the image and let's go ahead and open one more image. Let's open that one. It wants to convert it, that's fine. And let's right click, go to edit, copy visible. Let's go back to our brochure. Let's choose edit, right click, choose edit and paste into selection. Do not paste into place, just paste into selection then you can move it afterwards. This one here, we'll put it down a little bit in between these two lines from the margin. Careful to center it, and that's pretty good right there. Now these are our margin areas that we caution. This is safe enough over here. This one went over. Let's maybe make something fancy on here. We could do that. Let's add another layer and make sure it's transparent. And put it on there. Now let's take the free select tool and when you're drawing with the free select tool to make a straight line you must after you click with your mouse maybe we'll go right up here in the top corner see what that looks like click there and coming right out to the edge it will draw a straight line then come on over go right to the edge and then we go up right up to the top and click there when you get the yellow now we have this area selected now maybe We'll take a little darker gray maybe. Say okay to that. Put our paint in there. Get our paint can and click in there. And you see we've painted that. But let's change the opacity of that. We're at 100% here. Let's take the opacity down to where we can see through there. Keep cranking the opacity down. That gray is not looking very good on gray. So let's try a different color here. Maybe something around here. Let's try that and see what we get. Let's go ahead and repaint that. That's better. This is for demonstration purposes and maybe we'll take that opacity up a little bit. Maybe about 40% there. Now we go a little bit more down. Let's do 30% opacity. And then say select none. Another thing which we can do here, we could take, let's take a little darker blue. Let's take the freehand tool again. Let's add a new layer to that. Make sure it's transparent. Click out here off the drawing. Keep it straight. Just go past your other drawing. Let's go down here, over here, to this corner, up here, back up to here. Make sure we're fairly straight over to here where it's yellow and stop. Okay, let's put some darker blue in there. So take the paint bucket and put some darker blue in there. Again, change the opacity. Okay, and say select none to that. Now we have this area over here. This just gives you an idea what can be done. Let's try a yellow here. Let's take the free select tool. Let's click out here. I uh, see that distance of overlap there. Let's try and make the same. It's not too critical out here because this area is going to be cut off. That's the cut zone. Try to make sure you're straight when you come down here. Come on up here to about the corner of this house. Click on that. Go across here fairly straight to the outer edge of the cut zone there and back there. Now let's take the paint bucket, take the yellow, put some in there. The opacity is at 30% because I'm on the same layer here. Take the opacity down a slight bit more, 20%, and say, select none to that. Now you see we're getting a few different colors in here on the background. Now maybe we could add another image. 
We do have this area. Let's go ahead and add a layer. Make sure it's transparent. Let's take the free select tool. Let's click on here. Let's go down here a little bit. Make sure you're fairly straight. Go up here a bit, over here and there. Now let's take the paint tool and change it to maybe the gray and let's paint that. Now we do not have any opacity because it's a new layer. So let's crank the opacity down somewhere around 30% and say select none. Now that's uh, looking a little bit different there. You can see how we've added those colors in there and now we have different shades and different line strengths for aesthetic purposes. Now let's go ahead and put another layer down. New layer. Make sure it has transparency. Let's go and get another image. I have an image here, their company logo. Let's convert that. Let's right click, choose edit, choose copy visible. Let's go back to our brochure. Let's paste it in and see what size it looks like. Paste into selection. Oh yeah, that's not bad. So we could put that right up in here, kind of centering it a bit. Okay, you get that centered there. Click off on a safe area to anchor it. Now you know these are pretty close. I don't really like that. Go to undo or press control Z. Now we're selected again. Let's move that a little bit. I want to be centered with this picture over here. Get it centered the best you can. Okay, add another layer. Make sure it's transparent. Put some text in here or text in there. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it here. So maybe what we will do just to show you some techniques is let's take the rectangle here. Now, the rectangle tool has options here. Expand from center, which only works if you know where the center is. And then when you move, it expands out from there. That's not something we want here. Rounded corners. Perhaps we do want rounded corners. Here it's at 75. We're not sure what that'll look like. Let's go over here and let's make a rectangle. That rectangle might be all right for us. You know, the glory about GIMP is we're able to do some wonderful things with these. We have to look at the layout here. We have the layout here. That's pretty good there. Maybe bring it down here, but you can see we stagger here a little bit and do the same stagger here. That's pretty good. We've got the same distance here and here. A well, nice thing you can do with these rectangles, you see we have rounded corners there and our rounded corners are easier for the eye to look at rather than a 90 degree corner. But if we go to the select here and it says select border. Now if we made a border of 1 8 of an inch, that's 0.125, that should be sufficient. If you don't like that, you can up or down here, change it. We could be 0 0.125 and we say border size uh, style is smooth, feathered. We could do feathered and say okay to that. Now you see how the border jumped up there? What we can do here is choose a nice color for that border. He's got some gold here. Let's try that. Let's go take the paint can, go into that border, and there you go. Now, those feathered edges do not work well. So let's go and undo that border fill, and let's go back and to the border. The border was a little heavy there at 125, so let's go with half a 125, which is, which would be what, 0 0.067, right? And the border style hard. Okay, now let's paint that. Take your paint can, go in there, paint that border. Maybe what we'll do is we'll put black in there. Okay, let's go with black. Now a little trick we can do here is we could add the border again. If we just leave it highlighted there, go to border again, choose this time to make it smooth, and you see how the border jumped up here. So now we could choose a different color maybe the gold that we had say okay to that and then we can go in here and in here there you go okay so you see we have three rings there now we can so deselect that so select none 
Then we can take our magic wand, click inside here, and select the inner side here. Now if you'd like a white background to write on, you can choose white, take your paint can, go in there with white, and there you are. Okay, deselect that. There is some little tricks you can use. Now if we take some text here, we'll put some text on here. Let's go and find a nice font. Click on your text, click there, and go and look for a font that might look nice. I think I have something kind of fun right there. And let's make the font color here perhaps a blue. Maybe this kind of blue. Let's take the pen and check over here. Yeah, let's make it that kind of blue. Let's click in here. We've got a font that's 86, but let's see what that looks like when we begin to type. Okay, so we could put something this, just a little text for something to do so that we, we can see what we're doing here. Now we move these lines out a bit, but we don't want the text touching the border. So I'll click in there and hit the enter key and we can move our lines a little bit here and now we can actually expand that so we can go ahead and raise that text up a bit there's 100 so that's pretty good but it's difficult to see not bad we put we'll go to filters here and go to light and shadow and go down to drop shadow you have the old drop shadow go to this drop shadow here and you can see already the shadow came on there on the white background and you can change these presets a little bit if you want but we have enough of a shadow there for now you can see the shadow in there however we can do more than that if you like we could actually we could go to layers and we could say duplicate this layer that we just did now you can see the the shadow on the text there the drop shadow we can go back here now to text, change our color to maybe a darker blue, and it's telling me that this layer has been modified and I'm going to edit it. That's fine. Let's choose the darker blue. Now, we have two layers of text here, and we just, we had one light blue with the drop shadow under it, and now we've got a dark blue here. And if we just move that dark blue down a little bit, you can see the light blue showing up in behind there. So we've got two identical layers of text. And the reason I did that, as you will see, it gives our text a 3D, a three-dimensional look. Now we have the, the one layer with the light blue text and a drop shadow, and the other layer with the with the dark blue text but I don't really like that color so let's go back to text let's click in there let's highlight that blue I'm not fond of that let's try something different here maybe the gold would work I'm not too sure no nope, that don't work what will work that seems to be hard to look at and that's just as hard to look at trying to get the layer moved to the right spot is your best bet. Sometimes it helps to increase, zoom in a little bit. Then you can see a little better what you're trying to do in that area. Grab these wings here and just push that. That's a little better alignment, but I'm still not happy with the black. I'm, I think what we'll do is go with a gray here. Let's choose this color gray. That kind of matches over here. Let's zoom back to the 25 and let's off of there, okay? So there you have a three-dimensional text with a drop shadow. And we could add another layer and it would be transparent. And we could put something over here. This time we'd use an ellipse. Could be something like that. And again, we could put a different style of border. We don't need three pieces of color there. We could go and if you bring this right out to the edges and then you decide that's too close to the edge for me, I want to move in a bit, you can actually go to select here and go to shrink and tell it to shrink by a certain amount and say okay and you see that shrinks in there. Now if you say that's not enough, I want to shrink some more 
go back and do it again, and it shrinks again. And if that's still not enough, we could shrink it again. It keeps moving in whatever you have there. The other thing is, is that is an ellipse. It's not round. But if you want it to be round, you could just make these two numbers the same over here. If I go with this, bring it down, then we end up the same dimensions in both directions. This here is the position to move it around. So by working these numbers here, you can change the position or you can change the size and the shape. So now let's give this a border. Now, I just showed you how you could shrink that. You can also grow it the same way. Here's the border. We've got a nice blue there. Let's give it a border and let's use that blue we've got there. Let's go to the paint can. We've got that in there and let's say select. Now, if we'd like, we can change that. Maybe a gray that's on the house, maybe. Maybe that color. And let's go ahead with the paint can. Oh, let's first select it inside. Select that. Let's go ahead with the paint can and put that in there. Now, let's change the opacity on that a bit. That's about 50%. And let's deselect that. Let's undo that. Let's select it again. That opacity is too much. Let's go up. That's a little better. Maybe even a little bit more. 65. And let's say select none to that. Now we can go ahead and put some more text in there. This time we could put maybe some text from the gold. We could choose a different, a different type of text. Font face, a different font face. And let's go in here and say, so we got a little bit of text there. We just move this around, bring that over. Let's increase that size a little, well, maybe not. Let's move these text grabs right to the same spot on both sides and same with the top and the bottom, just so it centers our text. Now that text does not look good in there. So what we're gonna do we're going to move that into a darker gray and we're going to increase that size. Try to move that around there so that it fits inside there. Okay, that's pretty fair there. And maybe we'll change this to capitals like that. Move that bottom up without moving the text and move off the text. So now you see that we have we have uh, an oval here with some text in it. And again, maybe we will go to layer and go to duplicate layer and then go back to layer and say discard text information. And then we we'll change our gold color to maybe something out of here perhaps. Something like that maybe. We'll see how that looks anyway. And let's go back to text and let's go on top of this text. There we have. Now we just bring that text up a little bit. Now you see the dark text in behind kind of gives us a bit of a shadow there as well. And we didn't use a drop shadow this time. What I'd like to do is move that back. So we're getting close there to what we want. Again, let's expand this up a bit. We can see we've created our own shadow in the back here. Let's bring this down a little bit. That's too much. Too much won't look authentic. And let's bring it over a little bit. That, now we have, we can see this side of our text and the top of it. That's not bad, I think. Let's go back down to 25% and let's click off of our text. So you see there's another kind of text there. Now, another thing we might be able to do is, just to show you something here, we could add another layer another layer and it's transparent and there and let's take the free drawing tool and let's click away out here somewhere let's click maybe on the center line of this crease and let's go on the center line of that crease and right on that peak okay it doesn't really matter the edges will be cut off now, we're gonna go back this way, but try to stay parallel with this line, right to the crease. 
then let's go back this way. Try to stay parallel with the above line. And then again to here, trying to be parallel and back there. We have a, a line in there now. Now let's, let's maybe use this color. I don't know how that'll work out. Maybe we need a little different color, maybe there. Um, your colors are very important. It takes time to get the right colors. So there you see we have, we have that piece we put in there. And let's change the opacity of that so we can actually see through that. Again, this is just showing you what all can be done. And you can even put borders on that. So we could take our gray color here, say okay to that, color that border. Now, remember here, that is gonna be cut off. So there won't be any border going up and down there. And this will be cut off here. It'll just be two lines. Now we could add more we, with our border. We could do much more with that border tool, but that is satisfactory for now. So let's go and say select none. And there you go. Now remember, this is our cut line here. So these are some of the wonderful things that you might be able to do uh, when you're creating your your trifold brochure. Now we could go ahead and put some some text. Maybe maybe we'll take a color that's on here and go there. It's nice to use the same colors and then take the text and let's put some text in here without having a rectangle or anything. We'll just put some text in there. Now that doesn't really flow with us, does it? The size looks pretty good. What we might want to do is go over here to the to the rotate tool and click that and just rotate that and say rotate it okay and then we could grab our text tool again and go over here and write and again we could take our rotation tool click on that we're going to bring that up rotate that move this around a little bit i've got the little grab piece there move it a little bit you could do it from over there in the box as well now you see try to make it straight there try to get it centered and try to get the angle right that looks fairly fair and say rotate to that and one more time we could put in here and we can go to the rotate tool now if you have trouble finding these tools here you know it says over top when you move over it gives you a tool tip but you can also go in tools transform tools and rotates right there now we could spin this around i could do it here or we could change it here make sure we're on the right angle and say okay to that so you see how we have that in there and now just to finish this off transparent layer and perhaps a rectangle and this time we won't use any rounded corners and we'll just draw our rectangle right in here square corners no border this time and let's give us a background uh, what would you like for a background color maybe what we have there is fine let's just put that in there let's give it some opacity I don't really like that color let's try to find another color again let's use the pen there and maybe this color let's put that in there let's take some of the opacity out of that okay let's say select none let's get some more text let's get a color for that text maybe this time we use this here color and let's put let's change the font face to something we have all different kinds of fonts, but you want something that's pleasing. Here's one here. And let's start in there. Let's center that in our little rectangle there. I think the text size is large enough. Now you see here, we're getting the, the E is on a critical area there of the fold line. So let's bring it back a bit. Uh, let's bring it back a little bit more. Yeah, there's no need to crowd things like that. Now there we're on a fold line too, but there's not much we can do about that. Let's bring this down and get our text centered. That's pretty good. We'll add another layer. 
but not a new layer. We'll duplicate this layer and then we will go back to the layers and we'll say discard the text information. We'll go ahead and get our text tool, but this time use something a little bit different. Maybe the blue we had there, we don't know how that works yet until we put it on there and then click in there and let's rewrite. Okay, so there we have our extra text and let's just slide that up. It has kind of a 3D appearance there. I don't like this right in the crease there, but we'll let it go for now. Go up to 50% here, zoom in. You can see here that we should match our text up. You see here we see the top and this side. So we wanna have the perspective the same way. You wanna see the top and that side. That looks pretty good, uh, except it could be a little more aggressive. So let's just, let's just move this out of the way here a bit there oh that's too much let's go back a bit there now we've got the top and the side similar to over here we can bring this up to the bottom here and let's go back to 25 let's get off of that that's not bad here we have this text layer that's the one we just did there's text underneath it and by turning on and off your layers here you can see which which layer is which. Now, we could take this blue layer and we could move it down here underneath the other layer, turn it back on, and you see the blue is in behind. And that might be okay. Before we do that, let's move it back up on top and let's go back to text and let's change the color a little bit to a lighter color, maybe almost a white. If you want white, just write it in here six F's. Let's change it to white. Just take your pen and click on that. Six F's. Now, I don't know how that's going to work. Probably not that well. Let's, let's do that again. The white's not going to work. Let's take the pen and take this color here. A little bit of a yellow. Okay, click off of that. Put away the text tool. Move this layer now down one. There. You kind of have that yellow bit in behind move that layer back up I still don't like that I think we got to go with gray let's get the text tool again put it on there we're gonna have to go with a light gray so let's try something like that that's much better okay sometimes you have to play around with that kind of stuff well there you go that'll show you a little bit of what is possible. The biggest thing about making a trifold brochure is to actually get the layout down packed. So let's go ahead now, be on the move tool, and you see all these layers we have here created. We did quite a bit there. And you'll notice that when you create a layer, often if you have text on it, when you create a text layer, the GIMP will name that layer for you, but you should use your own layer names. And if you don't have text on the layer, then GIMP just gives it a number in the layer. But again, if you want to change these yourself, just click into this, double click. This layer here is the picture. So if I double click, then I can put photos. You see, and then click off and I've named that layer to photos and that is the one with the pictures in it. So simple as that. Now you've seen a whole bunch of things you can do and as I say the critical thing is getting the layout done so that you avoid these critical areas and hopefully that was fun for you. Okay we're going to remove these guides but before we do make sure you're at the top layer there and then go ahead and add a new layer. Transparency Okay, let's take our rectangle tool. Let's make sure we're on our layer. Okay, let's make sure we're right out to the extremities of our cut line there. And it should snap to those lines for you. And then go ahead and go to image and go to crop to selection. That removed that bleed area, the extra area. So now we no longer have 11 and a half by nine. We're back down to eight and a half inches by 11 now. But we use that extra area for drawing in and painting and moving our text and images around. 
Okay, so let's go to deselect or select none. And you can see that there are many wonderful things you can do with GIMP. The sky is the limit. You can do much more than we did with this one here. We can get these, get these grid lines out of the way now. Just pull them across there, get, get them out of your way. The biggest part is the layout, getting things set up. And then the next part is making sure that you're good with graphics and you have a good eye for what colors go together and what does not, choosing the right colors. You've seen there that working within colors that blend in with one another in a palette is a good practice. You'll notice here how we did different designs and we changed opacity and we put borders on and we did text shading with the filter and we did text 3D dimensioning with two layers. I, it, many, many wonderful things you can do. So let us just, now that we've got this, let's save our, our work there and then let us go ahead and export this onto the desktop. There is the desktop and it will be a PNG. We could export it as a PDF. So we're gonna send it out as a PDF. It's giving us some options here. This should be okay. Let's say export to that. And it's doing its thing there. So let's just move this out of the way. Let's see what we've got here. This says that this is our brochure. Should we open it with a PDF viewer? Let's give that a try. And there you go. Here is your trifold brochure tutorial. It's a fair size. You can now see how to make one. You'll want to use different things, but hopefully you've learned a bunch of wonderful, wonderful techniques here that can help you. You'll never quit learning with GIMP. There's many, many things you can do. It's got lots of capabilities. This tells us fit width, but if we go down to a smaller amount, you can see it there. The whole brochure ready to print off and fold up. This is only an example for demonstration purposes of what is possible. There are numerous things you could do when you're creating your brochure with colors and layouts and styles and, and images. You can put an image across the whole photo here, if you like, across your whole pamphlet, one image across the whole thing. You could have the whole background image covering everything if you like, instead of just pictures here and there. You can make designs, you can have banners with borders. Use your imagination when you're designing and laying out your trifold brochure. Be certain to save your brochure, not just export it as a PDF, but save your brochure in the GNU image manipulation program, GIMP program, as a GIMP file so that you can load this file again and have all your layers so that you can work on them. As you can see here, if we wish to change something on this text, we can go back into our file and we can choose this layer. Now we know it's this layer because we can turn off. There you go, you see, it turns off the text. So we can choose that layer, select it, and then we could get the text tool and click on it. And there you go, you see, we click on that text layer and we have it highlighted here when we take the text and we can go ahead and change our color or our style or whatever we like. So if you wish to change some of the elements on your brochure after, be certain to save this brochure as an XCF file. Go ahead, give it a name, a place to save it and save that. And it's simple as that. That way you can go back and make changes later. You can change any layer element on this document at any time as long as you have saved this template. Now of course this is going to be only one side of your trifold brochure. You'll have to use the same layout with the same columns and design what you would like on the other side of your trifold brochure. And after you have designed a second trifold brochure with the inside of the information, 
as this one could have the outside of the information. Then you will save each as an individual file and then for convenience sake you can bring them in to the same document. If we go ahead and we, we open as layers, we'll open our our PDF document as layer. It's it tells us here that we're eleven by eight and a half and we can import that. Now it's doing that. Now if we had the other side we would also go and open as layers and we would import the other side of our brochure and we would check to make sure the specifications and the paper size is correct and we would import that as well. Now of course I'm just using the one page here but you would have two if you design two pages. Then you have two layers here. The one layer will be the front of your brochure and the other area the reverse side or the inside of your brochure. Then you'll have the inside and the outside of your brochure together. And if you wish to print your brochure, GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program does not allow an option for printing double sides. So if you wish to print a double sided brochure, hopefully you have a home printer at your disposal that could print double-sided paper or perhaps it's modern enough that it has a brochure button. Some printers have a brochure button here otherwise the older ones are capable of printing double-sided. You're going to need to load your brochure PDF file into an office program like Scribus or LibreOffice or something like that so that you have your front page and your back page or your inner page and your outer page and from there once you have both images loaded both of your brochure images loaded you can go to print print preview and you'll see they're both here and then if you go to print you would see that there are options here and in those options you may be fortunate enough to print as a brochure otherwise you may be able to print double-sided pages if your printer does not support either of these you can always print the one side of your paper with the front of your brochure and then take that paper turn it around and feed it back into your printer printing the back side of the paper that you just finished printing the front side on. That's a slow process but if you only need one or two brochures that will work for you. Okay so a little bit of information about printing there and how you could possibly get that done. Thank you for viewing this tutorial by How To Pam Let's Talk Linux and if you enjoyed that tutorial give us a thumbs up or subscribe to our YouTube channel or drop us a line over at Twitter at HowToPam at Twitter. So thanks for watching another tutorial by HowToPam. Let's talk Linux.